I arrived on August 14th on the Queen Mary to travel in England, Scotland, and France, and at the last minute booked a return passage on the Athenia. I was in the third-class dining room on Sunday night. I had been dreadfully sick all day and had just finished a very light supper when the man next to me said, I think I'll set my watch. I was just in the process of setting my own watch when the loud crash of the explosion came and the support in the dining room, which was practically beside me, came crashing down. Dishes went flying all over the place. Lights were extinguished immediately. The boat lurched to the port side and everyone went hurtling across the floor. The fumes were so thick that we thought we would be asphyxiated and the smell was something terrible. Everyone was crying, oh my God, and we never really expected to see daylight. Somehow, I will never know how, I reached the stairs, being separated from my friends in the meantime. When I got up on deck, on the port side, I should say about a mile away, I saw a column of smoke which I took to be from the submarine. There were many dead lying around, and it wasn't very pleasant, of course. I couldn't get down into my cabin to get a life preserver and dashed frantically around, asking everyone where I might find one. They suggested I go into any of the cabins, but I wasn't familiar with the first-class cabins, which were nearest to the lifeboats, and consequently hardly knew which way to turn. Someone finally threw me a life belt, and a man helped me put it on. A rope ladder was thrown overboard, and I was just about six feet from the water when I noticed that the ladder was tangled at the bottom, and I could not possibly proceed any further. The man above was practically on top of my hands all the time, and I was wondering how much longer I could hang on, dangling in the air, when a man who was in the lifeboat flung me a rope, which I managed to slide down. There were 30 or 35 people in the boat, and we were just ready to push off when we saw a woman struggling in the water. We finally got her into the boat, although it was found that she had broken her arm. As we were pushing off, we saw several women coming down a rope ladder, but they slipped right into the water and I suppose were dashed against the side of the boat. I never saw them after that. A little later, I heard another explosion, and it seemed as if it were right under the lifeboat. It seemed a lifetime until we were finally picked up. I was so exhausted and weak that I had to be helped onto the boat and just flopped down and had to make the best of things. I was asleep when the explosion came. The terrific force pitched me down on the floor. Immediately, there was a complete blackout. I couldn't see to collect anything, not even my life jacket. I distinctly remember hearing two detonations almost simultaneously. I found my way out of my cabin and started the struggle to get on deck. I have in mind a general impression of wrecked and distorted steelwork and splintered wood. An awful sound of rushing water and almost overpowering flames. Um, as I made my way to the deck, I encountered at many points the bodies of those who must have been killed in the explosion. When I reached the deck, the scene was remarkably ordered, everything considered. Those who could made their way to their boat stations, but gradually, as the boats were slow in being cleared, there was a series of rushes between boat stations. Women and children were being flung into any boat which was ready to take off. Out to sea, I distinctly saw puffs of smoke from shells as if the submarine had been firing in an attempt to get the wireless. I helped to get the passengers into the lifeboat at my own station and also into one nearby. They were quickly filled, and with a chef who had been assisting me, we made our way to the other side of the ship. Most of the lifeboats seemed to be away, but looking over the rail, we were hailed by a boat which was being lowered into the water and told to jump. We managed to get away fairly safely. There were, however, few people on board who knew much about seamanship, and passengers and crew alike took a hand in the rowing. Presently, a launch came alongside, and an officer came on board and sorted things out. Later, the lights of the Athenia came on, and it was then more easy to see our whereabouts. By this time, we managed to find flares and had settled the women and children as comfortably as possible in the bottom of the boat. Altogether, we were aboard the lifeboat for about 10 hours before being taken on one of the rescue ships at 6.15 in the morning. Looking back on it now, it seems one of the quickest nights I've spent and has left in my mind a vague mixture of nightmare and stark reality. <laughs> 